all today to look at this Botnia Targa 46. Now I've been fortunate enough to test a few of these boats but I've never been on board this flagship model and although because of coronavirus restrictions in the UK at the moment we can't actually take it out, I can have a good look around and give you a thorough tour and rest assured we will go out and drive this boat when the restrictions have been lifted. Now as I said this is top of the tree of the target line but there are things here that you spot on every single target. This great big thick rubbing straight that runs around the side. You've got a bumper lower down as well which runs around the bathing platform. You've got these lovely high teak rails that run all the way around the boat. Teak until you get right forward up here to the fore deck and you've got railings and you've got railings here on the coach roof you've got railings on top of the wheelhouse really safe boat to move around now the other thing to mention about this particular boat is how high the specification is because including VAT this boat costs just shy of 1.1 million pounds when you see the detailing on this thing and the weight of its spec you can see where the money's going and actually this is the first target that Wessex Marine the UK agent have had that's got a high low bathing platform and that will be fitted out soon so that the owner can stow the tender on it and we step on board lovely teak finish throughout on the decks of this boat and up here on the bulwarks it looks really really smart you've got space here for your fenders you can slot them in here if you want to stow them back and out of the way and here is where you find the deck shower the cockpit is completely open as you can see but underneath these hatches which we'll have a look under in a moment you've actually got some director's chairs that stow away in a bag and a table so you can set this up if you want to have lunch out here of course people can perch on these lockers here these are storage i'm a little bit surprised that they haven't got something to hold them up because they're actually quite heavy and if they were to slam down in your hand you'd know about it and it's the same with all of the lockers in this area could do with something just to hold them up but they're very practically positioned and easy to open and chuck lines in. Perfect for stowing that sort of thing. Now if we look here under these lockers, you've got more storage. All teak top, looks really smart. And this one is actually a cooler. So you've got some cold storage space out here. You don't always have to go inside to use the fridges that are inside the saloon and this is a handy little addition just somewhere to put ropes and tie things to if you need to hold them securely and it also acts as a backrest if you're sitting on that seat up there and this boat one of the options it's got it's got IPS and it's got this third joystick option so you've got a joystick back here in the cockpit you've also got controls for the bow thruster here this is the engine information screen and it means that you can handle the boat from back here looking down the side deck and it also means that you've got a really good view aft if you're going stern two into a berth and you want to do it from there really convenient it's a sunny but blowy day here so i'm sorry if there's a bit of wind on the microphone these are useful both sides open up these boarding gates so it's easy to get on and off the boat from the side and i really like this mechanism because you can do it with one hand you just pinch and open and they fold all the way back gives you really good access onto the side of the boat you've also got them at the the forward end as well which we'll have a look at in a moment but that's really nice so if we head down these fabulous side decks these are really tall you feel very safe and secure moving down here you've got the handhold overhead as well so if you're really rolling about you can grab onto those but nice wide side decks you can move down here one foot in front of the other it feels very safe and secure side doors on both sides We'll have a proper look at them from inside the cabin and as i said you've got another gate here with a little step as well so again you can come out of here open this so if you're crewing single-handed and you can move out off the side deck and onto the pontoon really easily and this boat has got the comfort four cabin option which means you have the higher coach roof if you don't have that you have a more traditional targa forward cockpit where you have seating and a table but I think every 46 has been spec with the comfort four cabin which means you get more space down below again that'll be more obvious when we move inside the interior but even here look how lovely and deep the decks are you've got the, the guard rails coming up quite high as well so again it feels secure up here even though the deck level is raised up a bit 
good access to ground tackle here, mooring gear, big substantial cleats. You've got proper rollers there in the fair leads. And then this is your anchor hatch, access to the chain and the rope. And you've also got the winch handle in there as well so that you can control the winch manually, slot it in the top there if you need to. So now we'll head back down the port deck, identical to the starboard one. You see the scuppers down here, open scuppers, so if you take a big wave over the bow, the deck's clear of water nice and quickly. And another gate here opens up onto the side deck and another sliding door. And I think where we'll go next is up onto the flybridge. Now the smaller targets do have an upper driving position option, it'd be a bit generous to call it a flybridge, but on this size of target, it is a flybridge, and this boat's got the optional extended flybridge as well. See this little, this section here, where this owner's got the life raft. There's a few configurations up here, but this is quite a nice layout. You have the L-shaped seating here, nice teak table, obviously, with some cup holders inset, and then you have your driving position, proper bucket seat. It's a simple, clean, but effective dash, it has everything you need. You've got your Rain Marine MFT, you've got engine information, a couple of analog dials as well, which is always nice to see. And of course you've got your throttles and an IPS joystick up here as well. Some cup holders on this side, hewn from teak as ever, handhold, and then a twin bench sheet for some passengers to enjoy the ride under the protection of the little windscreen. And this actually bolsters as well, so they can lean if they want to. Got the VHF repeater up here as well. We head back down. We will take a look inside. Shoes off. And in we go. A sliding door there, that's actually an option. This boat's got, but it, it works really well. It just gives you, you know, better access inside the interior. It means you've got three points of access between this and the side doors on either side. Then we go. If you look to starboard, the first thing you notice is you've got a really useful storage area here, just to hang coats and things. Right by the door, so it's easy to grab coats on the way out or drop them off on the way in. And it is very traditional in here, but the craftsmanship is stunning. This solid teak is absolutely beautiful. It smells wonderful in here. It's not what you call contemporary, but it's targa through and through, and it feels built to last and, and built to go to sea. More storage running along here. All fiddled. All the tops are fiddled as well, so things can't roll off. You drop loose objects down there, they're not gonna roll off onto the floor. We come to the galley here, again, it's got a little raised top on it so things can't slide around. This has obviously got the white finish, there are a few different options here, but that looks quite smart. And lots of storage options down here. This one has got bespoke storage for the Targa branded cutlery. And then we move down here again, you've got more, more drawer storage. And then this bottom one is actually where you find the bins, but they're going to fill up pretty quickly. You might want to find a, a way to store some more rubbish because they're quite small, but at least it's quite a tidy solution. You've got the sink under here. The thing about these tops is I wonder where you're supposed to put them when you're actually using the sink, but at least that one fits, sort of fits there. Nice deep sink here. And underneath this hatch, you've got a twin induction hob with extraction overhead and this is quite a nice touch you've got proper dedicated drawer for the chopping board it just slides away like that and then one of two fridges in here nice high quality isotherm fridges you've got another one under the helm seat here got a big combi bosch oven and this boat's actually got a dishwasher again another option but that's got a dishwasher fitted useful addition put that lid back down and here is the main dinette. Comfortable, obviously gets excellent views out. These big windows we've got here inside this saloon. And the difference with 
you know, nearly a 50 foot target is how much room these areas have to breathe. On the smaller targets, your galley is sort of tucked up forward, but here it's down the side here, plenty of space given away to it. You've got lots of countertop space here. Again, the dinette table is a good size and there's plenty of space for people to sit around. More storage under here, nice deep drawers. And this is quite a nice typical Tiger Touch. You've got the spoke storage for the boat's crockery. The mugs are all held in place here. Shot glasses, absolutely crucial. More for glasses down here. And then you've got the crockery, Tiger branded crockery held properly down here. Very smart. Under here we have some bottle storage, top loading bottle storage. And this is where the television pops up from. They're actually doing some work on it at the moment, so it's not popping up. But when operational, it will pop up from under there. And obviously it faces the dinette, so people can watch it from the comfort of these seats. Really nice to see this big, substantial teak handhold here in a really good position to help you through the boat if you're moving along when the boat's at sea. And then we come to the helm position. A really a hallmark of Targa is how versatile and ergonomically sound their helm positions are no different here on the flagship. This one's got the fully adjustable suspension seat as well. Slides, adjusts, multi-directional. Should be able to get very comfortable in that no matter what shape or size you are. And as with all Targas, the wheel adjusts, so that just pivots here. But also this whole section of the dash, if you pull out this, you can pull this section into three different positions. You can have it up right now, or you can pull it down towards the seat. Just makes it so easy to get comfortable. Everything is super clear and concise. You've got all your switch gear, rocker switches back here. They sort of look functional, quite commercial, but it really suits the look of the boat. It's not about aesthetics. It's about being easy to use and being clear. Twin MFDs here in front of the skipper, but you've actually got another one overhead up here. That's an option that the, the owner added. You also got your fusion stereo system control up here. And this is your Volvo Penta screen, so that's where all your engine information comes through to. But always like to see the fact that you've got proper, nice, traditional Volvo, red on white, analog dials as well. For quick glances, they're perfect. Can't go wrong with those. If we look over this side, it's where you find the Rainmarine VHF is mounted. Nice to see that it's actually mounted on a proper teak plinth. That looks really smart. These are your light switches up here for the interior. They're dotted all around, but good to have some by the helm as well and this is a remote for the bow thruster so that you can walk around yes you've got joystick but you want a bow thruster as well just for extra peace of mind and you can control it remotely you can move around anywhere on the boat and control the thruster from this control here again mounted on a piece of teak very smart this is the bow thruster control here at the helm of course you've got a joystick down here too so that you can control the ips pods from the lower helm as well Sliding doors, every tug has got them. This one's no different. And they're quite stiff, but it means they hold in place. So they don't sort of lock into place along their travel, but they're quite stiff in their run of travel so that they do hold themselves in place as long as it's not really slamming along. But great for ventilation, great for getting out onto the side deck, whether you've got crew or not. Just a really handy, Thing to have and of course you've got one on the other side as well this is a nice little seating area here so a couple of passengers can sit face forward enjoy the ride they've got a foot stand too plenty of grab rails to hold on to really safe and secure dedicated spot here for some paper charts what are those but no you do want to have them on board and it's useful to have to stow them there and you can lay them here on this flat area here or indeed you've got a huge flat area back here be a good place to do some Passage planning. Got some bookcases as well up there so you can store your nav books. There is some storage underneath this area. A couple of cup holders as well. And more storage under this one. Overhead, you've got a couple of skylights and manual. You just twist these and push them up but they give you some ventilation and also bring some natural light in when they're not open as well. Next, we'll go to the forward accommodation. Access via this hatch and saloon style swing doors. There we go. 
And the benefit of having that comfort cabin, which is an extra, is the headroom down here. So here, as I come down the bottom of the steps, plenty of headroom above my head, I'm six foot one. Plenty of space down here and it's pretty good all the way around. Actually, you know, you can get to the storage lockers on either side. You're not having to stoop or duck your head. Hooks along here so you can hang up coats, things like that. Nice big wide double bed with easy access up both sides. There's actually some storage underneath the mattress, but there's also this drawer, which is easier to access. Yeah, you're not short of storage on this boat. If there's a space, a void, Botnia have usually stuck a drawer in it. Hanging locker on this side. Not huge, but it's something. Actually, these cupboards are quite a good size, both sides for, for storing clothes. Interestingly, there's actually a pipe berth under here. It's covered in the external cushions at the moment, but you have got another single berth under here. So if occasionally you do want to sleep another person, there is space to do that. And this cabin has an ensuite, wet room. There isn't space for a separate shower cubicle. So you've got a shower curtain here and you can mount the shower head up on here and, and use that to shower. You know, functional fit out, but it's all really nicely done. Nice teak grating on the floor there, a little bit of storage. And you've got a port in there as well. So you've got a ventilation fan, but you've got a port so you can get some natural breeze in here and let the steam clear out naturally as well if you don't want to rely solely on the fan. And then if we head aft, Back through the saloon. We arrive at the after accommodation and it has this banister here, but that has two functions. It's handy to help yourself down these steps, but it's also in a really good position again to grab onto. If you come into the boat and it's moving around a lot, you've immediately got something to hold onto to help work your way forward. Really safe and practical bit of design. We go down these steps into the cabin They've raised the decks on this model. The deck is ever so slightly higher, so you get more headroom down here, you get more headroom in the engine room, which we'll have a look at in a moment. But this is a nice, comfortable cabin. Okay, the person sleeping on the inside of this double bed is gonna to have to climb over the person on the outside if they wanna get out in the night, but not too much of an inconvenience. They've got some storage down this side, nice deep storage boys for personal effects down there. And again, you know, big thick teak fiddles so things don't slide around. You've got some sockets down the end there. You've got reading lights as well. There's a reading light down this end. A couple of small portholes here. I mean, it's a little bit dark with the door shut in here, but with it open, you get light pouring in from those aft doors. Good size hanging locker here. It's also got some drawer storage in it, but you've also got a rail so you can hang things up in this cabin some more storage here this is full of bedding at the moment but again really good useful big cupboard there now the bathroom for this cabin is actually outside the cabin it's got separate access it's a really good size it will be used the day heads as well no doubt people will come in here and use this to go to the toilet during the day but this one actually has got a separate shower cubicle it's a step up but despite that headroom is still really good well over six foot in here and the same inside the shower cubicle because it's got a flat floor. And then a bit of storage here, so you've got the sink, the toilet and some more storage underneath the counter here. Now if we head back out, we will take a look at the engine room engine room access is pretty outstanding on the Targa 46 because these huge panels here in the cockpit lift up on gas rams and then you have superb access to both engines makes these D6 480 horsepower IPS 650s look absolutely tiny but actually here under the hatch you can see this is the storage for the table on this side director's chairs so they're all tucked away nice and neatly and it really is a very very good machinery space very clean 
extremely neat, beautifully executed, very easy to spot leaks. It's all finished in, in white so you can immediately spot if there's anything there that shouldn't be. Very tidily arranged and you've got excellent access to the pods and the engines. You can get around all sides of both engines to do daily service checks, access to the raw water strainers is really good and the dipsticks. Visual checks are very simple but if you need to do more involved work you've got excellent access to both of the engines as well. You just see the generator tucked down in the corner there, the fuel tanks down this side. Now this is the most popular engine installation on the Targa 46, about 60% of Targa 46s have this D6 480 horsepower IPS 615. Top speed is 37 knots, so the UK dealer said when they were commissioning it, they got 39 knots out of it, which is you know, pretty good going for a 50 foot, 14 tonne boat of this style. For 80,000 pounds more, you can have the D8 IPS 800s, which have got 600 horsepower, but you're gonna spend 80 grand for probably about two knots more at the top end. Doesn't seem worth it to me. There is space for them down here. They're bigger engines, physically bigger, but there's space for them just because you've got so much space down here. The other engine option for 70,000 pounds less is to have the D6 440 horsepower on stern drives. And that would probably perform in a very similar way to this boat. Again, you're saving 70,000 pounds. I choose that option, not just because of the, the saving, but I personally prefer how stern drives handle but between those options there's there's pretty much something for for everybody unless you're looking for a shaft drive but that has never been an option aboard a targa exemplary engine room though really is a fantastic machinery space so that's the flagship of the botnia targa range i hope you enjoyed this tour of the targa 46 quite a bit of kit i think you'll agree remember we are going to sea trial this boat when we're allowed to, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that when the test is completed. Thanks for watching.